So if we form a junction between two different materials, how do we draw the equilibrium band diagram? If we look at the equilibrium band diagram of a PN junction, this is how it looks like. We drew it when we studied the PN junction current, but the way we drew it was heuristic. We have to develop a systematic way to draw equilibrium band diagrams. So if we look here, we find that we are seeing the vacuum level for the first time. And the vacuum level here is continuous. So this is one of the things that have to happen in any band diagram, whether it is in equilibrium or not. The vacuum level has to be continuous. Secondly, we notice that left of the interface, we have an electron affinity, which is the electron affinity of silicon, and right of the interface, we have an electron affinity, which is also the electron affinity of silicon, because we have silicon on both sides of the interface. Now, we also notice that the Fermi level is constant, and this indicates that this diagram that we are looking at is an equilibrium band diagram. But what if we are drawing the band diagram of a device consisting of two different materials, silicon and something else? How do we draw that equilibrium band diagram? There are a few rules which we can follow to draw the band diagram of any kind of device, and they are systematic and they allow us to draw the band diagram uh, with, uh, with ease. So the first step is to draw a flat vacuum level, and then draw the band diagrams of each of the materials in their locations relative to the vacuum level, as if they are in isolation. This will give you a band diagram which has multiple Fermi levels, and therefore it is not a, an equilibrium band diagram. This is called the flat band diagram, and is a first step in drawing the equilibrium band diagram. After we do that, we do a bunch of things to go from the a flat band diagram to the equilibrium band diagram. What we do is we move the Fermi levels for the different materials up and down till they meet at a, an equilibrium level. The way we move the Fermi levels depends on the materials on either side of the interface. For example, if we have a metal somewhere, then its Fermi level is going to be constant and everybody else is going to move in order to reach its Fermi level. If the Fermi level moves within a semiconductor, then there will be a depletion region that develops at the interface. This depletion region will lead to band bending at the interface, which is quadratic. If the Fermi level moves in an insulator, it will lead to the buildup of an internal field within the insulator. And if the insulator is uncharged, then it will have a linear tilt. This is all best explained using an example. So we will take the classic example, the example of a heterojunction. So a heterojunction is a junction between two semiconductors, two different semiconductors, so like germanium and silicon, or gallium arsenide and germanium. So the first step, as I said, is to draw a constant vacuum level. So the vacuum level here is uh, flat. And then we have an interface and left of the interface, we have material one. So material one is going to have a certain level of uh, electron affinity, chi one. And therefore, this will be the uh, conduction band edge for material one, EC one. It will also have its own band gap. And so this will be uh, EV one, which is obtained using EG one, which is a material uh, property. So this is the band gap of material one. It's also going to be doped at a certain level, and so we can find the Fermi level relative to the band gap, uh, relative to the uh, band edges, and so this is E Fermi for material one. Similarly, on the other side, we are going to find E C two, which is the conduction band edge for material two, using chi two, which is a material property. Uh, using the band gap for material two, we can find the position of E V two the uh, edge of the uh, second valence band. And then we can also find the position of the Fermi level in material two if we know doping in material two. So we can find EF2. Now the two materials are different, so they have different 
band gaps and different uh, affinities and different everything. How do they align in this diagram? Depends on the types of materials. Perhaps the second material has more band gap, but its uh, conduction band edge in this diagram would lie below the conduction band edge of the first material. It all depends on what the band gaps are and what the affinities are. Now, we notice immediately that this band diagram is not a thermal equilibrium band diagram because we have two Fermi levels, EF1 and EF2. At thermal equilibrium, we have to have a single Fermi level. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to mark these points, which are the points at which the uh, band edges uh, touch the interface. So we're going to call this point A, point B, point C, and point D. And we're going to ask ourselves a question, how can we migrate from this non-equilibrium band diagram to an equilibrium band diagram? What work do we need to do to reach an equilibrium band diagram? So we need to have a constant Fermi level. And that constant Fermi level, in this case, is going to be somewhere in between EF1 and EF2. Why? Because both materials are semiconductors. And so both of them are going to bend a little bit so that their Fermi levels end up at the equilibrium Fermi level. So that's going to happen because both materials have finite conductivity. If one of the materials was a metal, then its Fermi level would have remained constant and the other material would have had to do all the work so that they would have a shared Fermi level. How much bending happens on material 1 and material 2 is not a trivial question and needs to be uh, addressed using equations. But first of all, if the band diagram uh, to the left is not an equilibrium band diagram, what do we call it? So what do we call the uh, band diagram uh, uh, to the right? We call it a flat band diagram because it is a band diagram where all the bands are flat. Um, most of all, it's a band diagram where the vacuum level is flat. And by definition, in general, a flat band diagram is not an equilibrium band diagram. So what we said is that material 1 and material 2 will have to bend a little bit so that they reach uh, a common Fermi level that lies somewhere in between the two of them. So the bands of material 2 are going to have to be pulled down. So they're going to have to be pulled down so that the Fermi level EF2 reaches EF. When we do that, we are going to reach a situation where far away from the interface, we return to a difference between E Fermi and the conduction band edge of, the, of material 2 that is similar to this difference in the flat band diagram. Because away from the interface, we have electrically neutral zones where uh, the concentration of carriers is back at its equilibrium level. But near the interface, we're going to have bending like this so that we accommodate what has happened to the material. Uh, the, valence band is, uh, the valence band edge is also going to bend in the same way, EV2, so that far away from the interface we have the same difference between EF and EV2 as we had between EF2 and EV2. So the points A and D seem to have been pinned. We have preserved them and as we pull down the rest of the band diagram, we bent the band diagram so that A and D are preserved and the distances between band edges and the Fermi level away from the interface is also preserved. So on the other side of the interface, in material 1, we have to raise all the levels so that EF1 uh, meets EF. When we do this, far away from the interface, EV1 is going to be close to EF1, as close as it was in the flat band diagram, and we are also going to preserve the same distance to EC1 because the band gap is the same. So we're going to have bending this way in material 1. And this will be the equilibrium band diagram. So let's get, get take a look at this. What happened here is that um, points A through D were preserved in their same location. Fermi level 2 had to go down, Fermi level 1 had to go up so that they meet at a Fermi level, which led to band bending around the interface. This band bending is quadratic because both materials are semiconductors, and I know they are semiconductors because we drew EC, EV, and EF for both of them. 
In semiconductors, when we have bending, this is due to the formation of a depletion region, which has uniform charge distribution, linear electric field, and quadratic potential profile. Why were points A through D preserved? This is something called the electron affinity rule. And the electron affinity rule says, says something really simple. It says that on both sides of the interface, we have to preserve the electron affinity of the materials. And so if this is chi 1, the electron affinity of material 1, and this is chi 2, the electron affinity of material 2, then even in the, in the equilibrium band diagram, this has to be chi 1, and this has to be chi 2. This is not going to happen unless you preserve the positions of points A through D. So the preserving of points A through D, pinning them at the interface, is a corollary of the uh, electron affinity rule. Notice what's happening to the vacuum level here. The vacuum level is bending, and the, but it is continuous. There are, so there are no discontinuities in the vacuum level. This is also a corollary of the uh, electron affinity rule. What is this distance F? What is F? F is actually the distance between the original Fermi levels. And it is the total amount of bending that has had to happen in the, uh, in the two materials so that they reach an equilibrium band diagram. So if this is A and this is B, then it is the total amount of bending that has happened, uh, sorry, and this is B, then it is the total amount of bending that has happened A plus B is equal to F. So this is a built-in potential that has built in within the material so that it can move from flat band to equilibrium state.